All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're back to talk about Windows devices settings, how you can add things like Bluetooth, printers, and mice, and also keyboards, pretty much anything you plug into your computer, and how to change settings on those things. So the first thing you need to do is open up your Windows 10 settings. You can just type it into the search bar if you don't know where to find it. And then inside of here, there is literally a little picture of like a speaker and a keyboard called devices and go ahead and give that a click. So inside of here is where you can find like your Bluetooth and other devices. And if you needed to add a new Bluetooth device, you'd put that into discoverable mode where it's like blinking and something can connect to it. And then you click on this big button here that says add Bluetooth or other device. And then it'll ask you what you want to add. And then once you see it in this list, you can click on it and then you can add it to this list of devices. Likewise, if there's something here that shouldn't be there, like you got like a duplicate mouse or something, you can click on it. Like, let's say I don't need an extra mouse and then you can click remove device to get rid of it. Uh, similar with audio devices, you just click on it and click to remove. And these are all separated into different categories. Pretty much everything plugged in to your computer should appear somewhere in this list. Everything from my Oculus Rift to my speakers and my monitors and everything. So after that, you've got the printers and scanners section. This is where your printers and scanners will show up. If you need to add another one, you can do it the same way as adding a Bluetooth device by making it discoverable and then adding the printer or scanner. Most printers and scanners now are what's called plug and play ready, where you just plug it in and it's always available on your network. So in that case, you just click add printer. It should pop up down here in this little list. Click on it, go through the steps, and then you should be good to go. Likewise, if you've got a printer you want to remove, you can click on it. You can open the queue to see what's waiting to be printed. You can manage its settings or you can remove the device from your computer. Although do note most manufacturers like it when you download and install and use their printer app. So your mileage may vary on that. And then down here, you've got the options to let Windows manage your default printer. I don't see why not. You can always change that later. And then if you're on a mobile connection, you can enable or disable downloading over metered connections that, you know, limit you to how much you can use for data. Next tab under mice, you have the option to change some of your mouse settings. You can set your primary button to be left or right click, depending on if you're a left or right handed person. You can set your cursor speed. You can set your mouse wheel scroll speed. You can choose how many times to scroll each time you like, you know, click a notch through it. And then scroll inactive windows when I hover over them. I love this feature, actually. I turn this on and everything. And then after that, you've got typing. These are all of your like keyboard and spelling and typing settings. Do you want autocorrect on? Do you want to highlight misspelled words? Do you want to show suggestions as you type? Add a space after I choose a text suggestion. Add a period after a double tap on the space bar. All these are really nice little power user features if you find yourself typing a lot. Um, you can check out the typing insights for how the AI helps you type. You can do a touch keyboard settings, play a key sound as I type, capitalize the first letter use uppercase letters when I double tap shift. These are mostly like tablet mode settings. Um, show the touch keyboard when not in tablet mode and there's no touch keyboard attached. And then down here we have hardware keyboards. So you can say show text suggestions as I type, autocorrect misspell words as I type, on or off, multilingual text suggestions on or off. And then down here you've got make my keyboard focus easier to see. Advanced keyboard settings. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is like when you're using... Okay, when you're moving around your mouse, you can make it bigger or smaller. You can change how they look in these settings. And then advanced keyboard settings. What do we got here? You can change language overrides. You can switch input methods. Okay, pretty straightforward. And you can also enable or disable the emoji tab panel. After that, we have the pen and Windows ink. That's like when you draw and like write on your Windows tablet as if it was a drawing tablet. So the first right, or bleh. The first thing we got here is choose which hand you write with, right hand or left hand. 
show visual effects, show cursor, let me use my pen as a mouse in some desktop apps, ignore touch input when I'm using my pen, handwriting, size of my font when I'm writing directly into a field, medium, font when I'm using handwriting, all these nice things. Uh, when I tap the text field with my pen, using handwriting to input text, uh, when the keyboard isn't attached or only in tablet mode, write in the handwriting panel with your fingertips is also an option. You can do some recognition improvements here. Uh, basically, how to improve how Windows recognizes your handwriting. I'm sure they've got some steps where you can kind of teach Windows a little bit better how your writing looks. Uh, you got some pen shortcuts you can control. Click once for OneNote, double click for sending a screenshot to OneNote, press and hold to activate Cortana, allow apps to override the shortcut button. Uh, when available, show ink workspace after I remove my pen. All of these are really nice quality of life features. Autoplay, when you plug something in like a USB drive or a like a memory card, do you want it to do something specific? Take no action, open a folder, ask me every time. Uh, I really don't like autoplay a lot of the time. I like to kind of choose what I do every time, so I just leave these default. Or you could even disable this. And then USB is, do you want Windows to let you know if something's broken with your USB device when you plug it in? It's actually probably helpful. They'll tell you if it's you going crazy, if it's Windows going crazy, or if it is your device breaking and getting old. So yeah, all of those are really nice settings to understand and know how to use. And if you have any questions on that, let me know. I'll answer those in the comment section below. I've also got a Discord that you can pop into to get some help if you have any technical questions. And otherwise, don't forget to do the likey, subscribey thing, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.